Korea. And this game is going to be quite spicy. I think for a lot of people coming into this tournament, you know, we expected certain teams to perform. And so far, Gen G for the most part has performed to the level we expected compared to, say, the sporadic results we've seen elsewhere. Yeah, especially with uh, when you think about what they did in the season, right? Just being completely dominant, and they brought that here to the MSB. Yep. So looking forward to them and uh, playing a good match here against Fnatic. Uh, I did talk to Mane a little bit before walking in. He came in all smiles and stuff and was talking about there might be blood on the ground after this. And we we're like, oh, really? You're going to come out and do well against Genji? And he goes, no, our blood. And I was like, oh, oh, oh okay, oh. fanatic. <laughs> so, <laughs> I, know, I don't know. We'll see what happens. I think that the most important thing to keep in mind with this series for Genji is that um, they've only been drafting one style, which is unusual comps. And it's not. it might feel like it's not a style, but it is. They've totally been hiding strategies this entire group stage. This is going to be a tougher match for them. And I think the first game may determine whether or not they want to show something a little bit safer. So, you know, Dredd was mentioning this probably a little bit after we ended the segment um, about how he felt the same about Tempest, hiding a lot of strategy, something that MV Black now, Gen G has actually kind of been known for. Now Tempest is doing yeah. it as well. And it's terrifying how much these Korean teams have hidden, what their main style is, what their comforts are. I think one thing that is very important is that based on names alone, name of team alone, I think Gen G will know to still be fearful of a name like Fnatic. Of course, Fnatic is in a position where they're not quite the same strength that they were prior. I thought you were going to say that to ban a Genji or something like that. That's right. <laughs> I mean, that. You know, if you're, if you're going to name your name team Genji, like... I think that's a really good point that you raised there. I mean, uh, speaking with Sake, uh, even just going into this tournament, he's like, look, when the group of death is going to be very, very tough. Yeah, yeah. If we converse these strong teams now and eliminate some and put some in very... Uh, poor situations with the seeding, then that means that our playoff chance is going to be that much easier. We're not going to uh, hide anything, which is the complete opposite of what we've seen. So I feel like this series um, should be another big challenge, especially for Fnatic, that have had a very easy ride into this tournament so far. They're sitting at 5-1, and one, but now this is the uphill battle. Where do we start to see Fnatic really climb up? They went 2-0 against Tempo Storm. Tempo definitely were in that game, but Fnatic were able to round that one up. So mm. we speak about the Mene example with blood, but yeah. how much blood? I mean, you also can't forget about the history between these two teams. I mean, we, we go back years now between these two teams. I mean, of course, we got different rosters here and there, uh, but there has been some trades of wins back and forth between these guys. There is definitely a spirit of competition mm -hmm. when you look at Fnatic and Genji. Yeah, I mean, in terms of BlizzCon playoffs, one on one, you know, obviously yeah. MVP Black winning last year, and then the, the year before getting knocked out by Fnatic in the semifinals, not making it to the grand finals. So, whenever I talk to MVP Black about it of course now Gen.G, but that roster back then, they never said they felt like it was a rivalry and more that they actually really respect Fnatic as being mm. one of the only European teams that could really consistently take games off of them uh, back when Korea was really dominant. Yeah, I mean, of course, there was that moment where uh, last year, uh, of course, Fnatic wasn't exactly the Korea killers, Dignitas was at that point, mm -hmm. but Fnatic took the tournament in the end, and that is very, very important when it comes to that kind of, you know, respect mentality coming from these teams. That was one of the criticisms of Fnatic's win, actually, at the MSB yes. last year, is that they didn't beat a Korean team in groups. I think they actually did lose uh, to this team with a different roster. Um, so that's probably something that they would love to get off their shoulders, right? And mm -hmm. maybe if they could do well here at the MSB and get a couple mm -hmm. Korean victories underneath them and kind of squelch those rumors that happened last year because that was actually a big topic for a while. People were like, this is a legitimate Definitely. win, which is a, a weird thing to hear, but one that can kind of make sense. I think if you talk about form coming into the start, we cannot forget, right? Uh, Gen G have just been so, so dominant. They came into the second half of uh, phase number one and just did not drop a game, right? They were like, look, we had a rest. We had a big break after BlizzCon. We celebrated, we partied hard, but now it's time to get down to the knuckle's edge and we want to win the MSB. That is, if you're looking at their trophy cabinet, there's just a little bit of dust. It's like that one little trophy that is missing, right? And that's yeah, what they're hungry yeah. for. It's going to be Volskaya Foundry. What are we thinking? Well, I mean, again, I've said it so many times in this uh, group stage. But Say it map more. We see in Korea, more. we've seen it seven times leading up to this. I think this is the eighth time Volskaya Foundry has been played this tournament. So mm -hmm. more than double the amount of times we saw it the entire season in yeah. Korea in three days of play. All right, let's get into it then. It's going to be game number one here. The final series of the day. Genji goes up against Fnatic. What? The opening of wow. Roban. <laughs> This feels like uh, Korea, you know? Yes. Uh, winter Winter Finals 2016. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, yesterday Fnatic also showcased Thrall in both their matches, Earthquake being a heavy priority for them. And so Jinji thinks that's a uh, strategy that's working out well. See if we can pick them apart and go from there. Uh, so Thrall taken out. 
Maev is the answer back from Fnatic, and we'll go straight into a first pick, Malfurion. What does the Thrall first ban suggest, though? Because we've seen so many bruiser heavy comps where they're running one ranged assassin, and it's typically being paired with something along the lines of a Maev just to get in your face, make sure that you get big, big uptime, uh, kind of like a melee version of your Falstead Gust to slow them and control them. I'm. Um, in the same way that, like, you know, Hera's half value that Zero tool very, very highly up, I'm very baffled by this Thrall I don't being think away. Can, I don't think you'd necessarily draw any conclusions yet. Uh, Thrall being banned, I think, is somewhat of a respect, given the, the Earthquake run you were talking about earlier. But at the same time, I feel like the one thing we could maybe guess is that Genji was hoping to bait out a very early Garrosh pick here, potentially a Genji pick, and counter those picks. But Fnatic didn't go down that path. They insta-locked the blaze, so prioritizing that top laner here on Volskaya, the ability to escape big combos, big damage, mm -hmm. and Muradin as well. So which which is really more unusual here, the Thrall ban or the blaze Muradin first pick priority on the side of Fnatic? They will go ahead and grab the Tracer here slowly as they consider further options, but I don't think we could draw conclusions yet about that Thrall ban. It's obviously very strong against Tracer, but situational. Comfort composition here for Gen G. Rich uh, already show you, basically showcasing what he can do when he's given the resources and uh, wanting to pad that KDA even harder, make sure that Sake uh, has his work cut out for him. But then Kyocha is absolutely bodying, taking members down with that Sonya. So I love that respect band towards it as well. And the Genji to uh, give, once again, Rich that free reign um, speaks volumes to me. I'm kind of curious here what Fnatic's going to move into. We did see the Falset yesterday, and Falset has been a... Uh a back door for Fnatic. They were able to get that victory on Tipo Storm in particular, which was exciting to see. And it's one that's good on this battleground. But you have to be careful running a false set against a Tracer. Being able to zip in and drop that yeah. false bomb is always a deadly combo. And you have to watch out for her to come find you if you're trying to split push. So if they want to go that route, they got to be aware of it. Also, we've been seeing a lot of Lee Ming from Mana this tournament. I'm wondering if we're getting it again. And there it there is. Yeah. yeah, Lee Ming coming through here. When they played against uh, Tempo Storm yesterday, they had the Malfurion first pick, so they have, have to, you know, adapt to how they want to draft this around this Leeming, and it's a later Leeming pick with the Deckard Kane. More of that potential combo we were talking about where you set up the stay a while and listen into Leeming resets. Could be very powerful if you can hit it onto the Tracer, mm. but Rich is so strong positionally on the Tracer that even though her mobility options were nerfed, uh, Rich was so excited to see the damage tweaks that came into Tracer yeah. to kind of yeah, level yeah. her out because he looked at it as a massive buff. Positionally, I think it's going to be very difficult to hit Tracer with Storm Bolts, Blaze Charges, or Stay a While and Listen. Mm -hmm. I feel like that's definitely what Fnatic are looking to try and achieve, right? It's like, okay, we have these uh, CC controlling elements to try and turn that fight around. We know it's going to be the rich show, and look how good I am with uh, the mechanics that I can display. Uh, but they're going to definitely have their work cut out for them. I can obviously, I can understand what they're trying to do, reset the fight, then let Li Ming uh, get amongst it and, and, uh, and try to blow her up in an instant when that CC is down. But yeah. Uh, I feel like it's going to be very, very uh, hard for them to try and get into Rich. Don't forget, though, Fnatic is willing to uh, change the way they approach a team fight. And they could just try to go for the Tassadar. We have seen many times Li Ming, Mene in particular, will try to find a Tassadar and just blow it up and try to break that composition apart. Now, Drass coming in pretty quickly. We've got that Leo and Diablo coming in for yep. Genji for that uh, final fourth and fifth pick. What do you make of it? The Diablo pick is really interesting to me because it's not very necessarily powerful against anything that we're seeing on the side of uh, on the side of Fnatic. It's not a counter pick. It's not Diablo's best map. I think this is again just hiding stuff a little bit. The Auric pick is a little bit unusual here as well. Going up against Blaze, it can be quite powerful, but hmm. it's not necessarily a counter pick in any way. It doesn't feel combo oriented either, so it's a little bit puzzling to me. I mean, double tank, double support isn't that common at the moment, regardless. Yeah. I think um, Trixler, though, we're going to start with predictions. I'm going to go with Fnatic. I see a lot of comfort picks here. Cassia there uh, for Quatnix. You got Li Ming here for Mana. You have Murden, which has been pretty good this entire tournament so far. And uh, I'm going to believe with the U train, man. I think they got a victory here. Just looking here, I've seen what uh, I've seen what Leoric has been able to achieve before with that Buried Alive, especially in that series uh, with the one. Yep. I'm just looking at who they're going to try and collapse on. You've got obviously the blink potential of Li Ming and the jump back escape potential of the Muradin. So I feel like if they can try and get that one bow combo, especially when it comes around to a control point, then that should set the fight up. Diablo, I'm imagining, is going to try and get onto the cane to prevent that stay a while and listen. That's probably the biggest justification I can find for it. Um, but I think Rich, the mechanics he has, the ability for him to sort of like weave in and out and play kind of like Sonic the Hedgehog, uh, I feel like Gen.G for me. 
I mean, you can see how many times Rich avoided dying and getting blown up on Sergeant Hammer while in Siege mode. <laughs> right. <laughs> just uh, just yesterday. <laughs> um, if you remove team names on top of this, uh, or if you rather you remove Gen G's team name on top of this, I vote for Fnatic 100%. But given that this is Rich, and this mm. is uh, probably the best Tracer player in the world today, uh, I have to go with Gen G. And I think I have to go with Genji as well because of the current undefeated record that they sit at right now. And until that's broken, I don't know if I'm going to be get betting against them. Let's see what if Twitch chat is going to be betting against them. 39% to 61% in favor of Fnatic here coming into this game. I think maybe Twitch chat doesn't know that Genji is actually KSV. Can we get, MVP can we get uh, Twitch chat <laughs> on, that, uh, on that Twitter vote tally? What's going on with that? I think <laughs> they're going to be in a bad spot. I'll be honest with you. <laughs> <laughs> Twitch chat doesn't want to know about it, but like, real talk here, you know? <laughs> ah, but they are all Grandmasters players in there. Don't forget that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, forget that. At least we've broken the curse of, what, 81% to 19%? It was like, that was, that was every single game. Yeah, yeah, it's not been that... Actually, there was one today. There was one. <laughs> but. Uh, let's check in with the commentators as well that are going to be bringing us all the action for this one. It's the tall guys. Actually, no, Caldo's not that tall. It's one tall guy and a bald guy. Uh, <laughs> oh, how you doing, hold, on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I got this, I got this. Yeah? Oh! oh. <laughs> Too short, guys. <laughs> <laughs> All right, have fun, boys. I'm not going to let you retaliate. Go up a little further. There we go. Oh, yeah. We're Close definitely going to have quite a bit of fun. Great match for us. It is. I mean, this is uh, the first time we've casted this series since about a year and a half ago, BlizzCon 2016. Yeah. And I, as far as I remember, the last series wasn't too shabby, so <laughs> maybe we can repeat that. Well, here we go. Gen G trying to see if they can take down Fnatic and remain undefeated. It's going to be Sake on Malfurion, Rich on the Tracer, Reset on Tassadar, Kyocha on Leoric, and Tist on Diablo. And over to the right side of the map here in Vault Sky, our foundry in game number one, we have Fnatic. The Swedes with a bit of a French influence here. Bad Benny on Blaze, Breeze on Muradin, Smexy on Deckard. We have Min on Li Ming and Quacknix on Cassia. Well, I don't think it's uh, any secret what we're going to see Genji try and do, and that's just going to be let Rich run loose here around these control points. And there is a lot to be discovered, I think, as we see this composition. The Cassia coming out is going to be an interesting counter, and of course, Mene on Li Ming has been absolutely killing it these first few days of the midseason brawl. Yeah, definitely. Even going into his uh, 13 full glass cannon and just trying to get damage through. The funny thing is, when he went glass cannon in the last series, well, hold that thought for a moment. Breeze gets flipped, is able to walk away. But yeah, when he went glass cannon against Tempo Storm, he didn't even tell his teammates about it. They told him later, <laughs> we didn't even know about it. We looked at him and he was like, wait a second, did you actually go glass cannon? He was just like, yeah, it was fine, right? Of course, of course. This is Mene we're talking about. One of the most confident, one of the most experienced, one of the best we've ever seen at this game on that mage roll, and uh, why not? I mean, to be fair, he didn't die a single time, and his damage <laughs> output was incredible. But here in this game, he will have to repeat that performance. Feast on Fear already on level 1 for Diablo. We still see a lot of Devils too. But of course, there were a couple of different approaches to Diablo after the rework. And especially from the Korean side, it was always the question, where is Diablo in the meta right now? How high do we prioritize him? Yeah, I really am curious how that works. You know, we're still getting used to the new changes, being able to get that heal off of that fire stop. And you look at the double melee and potentially triple and more people coming in. Yeah. Diablo, we're still discovering how well and effective this new build is. And on a map that requires a lot of sustained healing in that, that's one way to self-sustain there. So definitely interesting. Against heavy melee composition, we saw some insane survivability already. And talking about survivability, Leoric here going for Austin's Renewal on level one. If you just look at the Western scenes, that's also very atypical. But we have the same approach seen at the Eastern Clash. But also at this time, Benny going down, standing on the objective here, and Gen G moving in for the first blood in the game. Yeah, he got caught on that rotation up. Maybe it was forced up either way. We do see the healing pulse picked up there by Fnatic. That does obviously help out. Both teams also picked up their turret. So more items on the side of Fnatic, but sacrificed a bit to get it. Yeah, I call worth. That was a very well-planned <laughs> sacrifice that we saw from Benny here. A 200 IQ play for sure. Uh We'll see, we'll see if it pays off, you know, but either way, right now, we're getting close to the control point, about 35 seconds away before that starts. That's when the real action comes underway here on Volskaya around that. We know there are so many teams prioritize that first one. They are willing to commit everything all in on this first team fight. And we're also seeing Tassadar, instead of going into that yeah. extra life, Leech is actually going in the armor after that shield burst. So making sure that Tracer gets a little bit of added protection when 
We know Rich likes to be aggressive. With the way that the meta is shifting a little bit more towards these blow-up attempts, be it with CC or without, I really like the Tassadar players are shifting more and more over to the extra armor. And it's not only for Tracer, it really helps you to keep that front line alive. And that's just absolutely fantastic when you're on a map like Oskaya, where you have that tank constantly on the control point, and Tessa can help with that sustain. I tell you one thing, they're really complimenting Mene and the team back here. We're getting the rejuve, excuse me, not the rejuve, that actually just, just the uh, heal over time uh, with the shield. Uh, Mene here firing away the entire time, and of course he's just waiting for a good lockdown from Breeze. Once that Stormball is announced and he gets the combo off, that is serious damage that he can bring to the table. Both of the teams still with the wave clear. We have also Fnatic with a pretty good timing on their own camp up at the top where the towers are going to help out slightly defending Gen G's camp. It's really interesting because we will see teams flex somebody off to try and get that upper hand. You have Tassadar, which has some wave clear, but we know that Reset is constantly there trying to support Rich. You have the Malfurion, you've got the double support but they are constantly here. Nobody has actually obtained control even of this. So it's just kind of contested for now, zero to zero still. Exactly, a four versus four battle in the mid lane as we see the off lane are still busy down at the bottom of the map. Leoric versus Blaze is the name of the game. But over here, Fnatic is starting to take position and once again, they're pushing in with the Smexy, trying to control the area. Rich is starting in, wants to go for the kill against Mena, gets the bomb off, but is not able to confirm the kill. Not able just yet. You can see Mene holding tight in there, did not go that force armor at level one, remember that. So even if those magic missiles land, those pulse bombs are still gonna hurt. Nothing to reduce those whatsoever, other than maybe that shield off that Deckard heal at level four. Genji already with a tab at the fountain. Fnatic for a lot of their players still has that as an option available to them. They hold the position and they're starting to move in. Breeze stacking his level one, of course, and both of the teams by now on level seven as Benny goes straight for another turret here, straight towards the camp. Now trying to keep an eye on that. All those items were used previously in that fight. Rich still holding on to his, however. Tiss going in very aggressive right now. There's going to be the slow. There's going to be the lockdown, the blind, the extra damage. And now instead, Rich is actually going to turn that. And he says, you're not killing my guy. I'm killing you. And that's going to be kill number one in this long drawn out fight there. They're still looking for more. There's Rich going in down below. It looked like a great engage. Cassie with a ton of damage against the front line, but then the turnaround attempt and Tassada putting in the final blows here. Their second kill, the third in the game, coming in now against Benny for the second time. Blaze fights the dust as Rich goes in and takes him down. All of a sudden, things starting to open up just a little bit. You know, it's interesting because if you are going to give up a protector, it's almost better to give it up much longer, right? When these are obtained much earlier, we saw it earlier, the team was right around level 10. Getting them, it, it creates a different pace for the game. It's hard to, I guess, maybe put into words right now, but the pacing is very different. So we'll see Fnatic come in and continue to contest this next one. It's another turret's picked up here by Gen G. Yeah, Fnatic is still in a position where they could try and make a play. The problem is that Gen G is already ahead in experience now too, but Fnatic is moving in. They're trying to lock Tiss down, and they get that lockdown attempt, but there's not enough damage. Overtime has started now as Gen G is starting to make their play for the first protector. They're closing in on level 10 as well. Fnatic desperately trying to just up the ante a bit. Rich just sitting on a pulse bomb, also has that turret. He's diving the back line. He gets on to Mene. He is putting the pressure on. That's going to be another kill there for Rich. Level 10 picked up off that. The Entomb into the lightning breath. That's going to be Deckard falling as well. Quackling soon after, and that is Gen.G blowing this game wide open. Fnatic over, staying in the kill against Li Ming. Gave Gen.G enough experience to finally hit level 10. Insta pick on the talents and a fantastic Entomb that we saw from Leori Kyoja with a play there. Lightning Breath comes through, and that's another kill coming in as Gen G takes a two level lead and seven to zero kills, completely dominating Fnatic in the early game. It just seems like every time that Fnatic engages, Rich is just like, okay, that is my chance, my opportunity to get to that back line, and Deckard unable to keep those heals in place, and it's been a tough ride so far. Breeze and Mene out a little bit far. Mene is going to go ahead and blink on pass there. And the levels continue to mount up here as Jinji now approaching level 12 before Fnatic's even at 10. Protector moving in at the top and Genji in a fantastic position right now. Three level lead by now as they're taking down every single one of these structures. They go straight for the turrets, extra experience for them. We still see the Auric at the bot lane. And of course, Fnatic, they were worried about losing out in the early game. That's why they re-engaged into the objective, but it just backfired heavily against them. Four deaths on their side and Genji is still with the Protector. They're nearly holding level 13 and Fnatic is not even 10. 
Yocha's having a good time back here as he's put so much pressure on that bot lane and Benny has struggled there. But level 10 now here, Fnatic, they're looking for a fight, Kaldor. Yeah, they're trying to force it before level 13 and they're going straight in. They try to fight for the healing puzzle. The lightning breath is already out as we see Tranquility used by Saka. They're going in, reset with a shield. Stay a while and listen, comes to the bunkers on the ground. Kyocha from the back line moves in, tries to jump them here with the end tomb. But once again, Fnatic is starting to fall low. The bomb goes on the breeze, but Benny is falling again. He's down, that's the first kill. And Gen G is looking for another. And they're going in deep for it too as Tiz starting to get in position gets the body block against the wall and Quagnick is gonna fall sometimes Kaldor it's nothing more you don't have to auto attack you don't have to press any buttons you simply just right click and pat them right into that wall and Tiz making another top-notch play for this team. Genji has kicked legs out of Fnatic and is currently kicking the dead body that is the European team. Nine kills against a zero a three level lead a 13 talent in the hands of Genji and the second objective hasn't even spawned yet. They are dominating this game. Fnatic is desperate to get to that. And there's there should be a small window of opportunity to where they'll be on even talent tiers. If they, it, barring no other deaths at this point, right? They can get to 13, maybe that 13 to 15 window right as that control point spawns, maybe after it spawns. But that right there could be a pivotal moment on whether Fnatic can start to find their way back unless they can find a kill, a gank in the meantime. And right now they're coming down looking for it. Yeah, Fnatic is currently just looking. They know they're so far behind. They need they need to be aggressive. They need to do something here. They can't just sit and wait. They're way too far behind for that. They're not only one level behind, they're three behind, and they will be forced into a fight against the talent advantage. So they are trying to take them currently where they can, being a bit more aggressive, brazenly invite that cam, and at least take that item for now. So they have a bit of an item that might help them over the next objective, but it's gonna be so tough. That level 20 talent for Genji is insanely powerful. Ice block, nullification, and also Ominous Raid taken here. Genji has a fantastic team fight at this point. Just think about this though. For Fnatic, all it takes is one. It's like cutting the head off of a snake with this composition, whether it's the Tracer or Diablo, preferably the Tracer at this point. But you get that one kill, that one blow up, and a fight can just explode in the hands of Mene on the side of Li Ming. It just takes one. And that's all that Fnatic is gonna be looking for. 25 seconds before the next control point, still a ways away from 13. Fnatic will try and find that elsewhere. Look for them to potentially push down this bot lane get some structure XP and then look for a fight up top. They have Valkyrie as well, and of course the thought process behind it is a lot of isolation. The problem is you go up against Tracer with the recall, you go up against the dimensional shift of Tassa, the ice block on Malfurion's side, and also the Wraithwalk for Leoric. So there's a ton of escape tools that we see from Gen G where they can shut down these attempts of Fnatic to try and make a play. But now the objective is on, and down here at the bot lane with a five-man, Fnatic is committing to a potential kill against Kyocha. They're in there, but Rich is on the backside looking for a potential kill as well. They do get the kill into Leoric. They also pick up level 13. With that being Leoric, as Valkyrie's gonna miss there, remember, Leoric will be back up. So look for Fnatic to potentially rotate up. However, Kaldor, this might be an opportunity if Diablo's up there and Leoric still has a ways to go. 16 tiers right around the corner for Gen.G. Maybe Fnatic looks to get back into the game through experience through the bot lane. Yeah, Fnatic is trying to push this now. First of all, it's going to force Leoric back eventually, sorry, Diablo back eventually, but they also can pick up some extra experience by taking down structures. They're far behind, but they're trying to make the best out of a bad situation. But look at Gen.G. Two heroes for the defense. Diablo still up at the objective, and in the meantime, Malfurion and Tracer have simply taken the healing pulse. And that actually indicated that Fnatic was okay. They had no idea where Malf and Tracer were, so they're like, maybe we can get back there. That's a top-notch side storm there, because that's going to delay the back, and Kyocha is going to do everything he can, because that protector, as well as Tracer and team, should help guarantee this top keep. What a smart play. What Gen G just did is they held a five-man push with two heroes, while the remaining heroes of their team just simply got value on the map. And now they have a protector pushing the top lane. We see Benny down here in trouble. He's the one that tried to make sure that everyone else could move back. But this is a disaster for Fnatic. Still three levels behind. Here's the Entomb, and Benny goes down once again. Ten kills against one as the protector to the top eliminates the first keep of the game 12 minutes in. With that being said, two members are down, so they are looking looking to pop this protector if they can. Unfortunately, not able to close that gap. Had they been able to take that, they would have had that advantage, numbers advantage either way. But Fnatic finds themselves in a difficult spot as they're three levels down, and it's just going to continue to stretch as these structures fall. 
Fnatic is currently experiencing the spanking of a lifetime. Three and a <laughs> half levels behind, and Genji is already looking to drop the second keep here in the mid lane. There's 10 seconds left on this, a few percentage points. So they're going to poke away as much as they can, get every inch, every ounce of this protector, as it's now going to fall. Stun's going to land there onto Rich, who still sitting on this turret. With this much of a lead, they might actually just siege up on this Galdor. Yeah, they definitely can. They can rotate, get the items on the map if they want to, but with a four-level lead and the talent advantage, they can definitely siege up in that position and try to draw that out, drop the keep slowly and steadily, and force Fnatic to defend here. But they decide in favor of map control and the item advantage. It's working out for them. Every time they open up more and more of this map, it gives that race towards 20. Fnatic, their, their opportunity is going to be one. It's literally hit 16, look for a fight before Jinji hits 20. They might even try and go for it under their keep. They might be looking for it right now. Yeah, they're trying to go for it. That game simply snowballed away from Fnatic. That early engage into the level 10 of Genji over the first objective just absolutely dominated Fnatic. Here comes the Entomb into the lightning breath. Fantastic coordination by Genji as they go in for the kills. Down goes Cassia. Smexy slows them down for just a moment, but Genji is still on the warpath. The psionic echo is just ripping them apart. Man, they hop to the other side, and Rich is somehow dancing in enemy territory, looking for an opportunity, and that opportunity is actually Kyocha getting the kill. And somehow Genji is just living in the base of Fnatic and making it work. Absolutely incredible play here by Genji. Now Fnatic again, they committed to a very unfortunate fight around level 10 and it just snowballed away from them completely. They fell behind two, three levels and now they're paying the price. Fnatic in game number one, a bit too risky and Genji with a perfect game here takes it. 14 kills against one. Not quite perfect, but just pretty incredible stuff. So. Uh, just letting Rich do work. And that first protector is so incredibly strong. And for Jin Ji, they were able to get one kill and then get the second. And that just made so much turn the momentum in their favor. It worked out well, but Kaldor, that was a that was a beatdown. Yeah. And Jin Ji was relentless. They were merciless in that game. It definitely was absolutely brutal. And again, it snowballed away after level 10. But the impressive part was that even with the big lead that they had, Genji never opened an opportunity for Fnatic to come back into the game. And Fnatic was looking for them. They tried to force these fights, but they were beaten down over and over again. And Genji takes the victory. They took the victory, and we're going to take it right back over to the command center, control center, whatever we're talking about with Calaris the has. The Hive. We're sending it back to the Hive. The Hive? This isn't Resident <laughs> Evil 1, the movie. What on earth? Like, you were right at the beginning, Jay How. Stick with your gut instinct, all right? Uh, but it really felt like, unfortunately for Fnatic, they kind of got mauled by a wild beast at this point. Uh, there was a few glimmers of hope when it came to some uh, picks, and maybe they, you know, they were trying to push down towards the bottom whilst giving up the top uh, trigger lock protector. But other than that, Genji looked fantastic. Yeah, it really felt like too much was given up in the middle control point, and at that point, it's just so hard to fight back, especially yeah. as a Cassia. They tried to go the Valkyrie route, but they were prepared every single time. Genji was ready for it. Tassadar, impossible to hit. Diablo was the only one that was really nailed when it came yeah. to his Valkyries, and you don't want to give Diablo a free no. engage. Just Fnatic, they got outclassed, man. I think Tiss Diablo was pretty fantastic. It wasn't a, it wasn't one of those heroes where you think of it combo oriented. It's not a hero where you're looking for like Void Apoc or the greatest lightning mm. breath ever. He just really controlled space very well. Yeah, and actually replay is ready. Yeah, we're gonna go ahead and take a look at some of these fights. So watch this fight here where Diablo actually watch Tist. He's gonna move forward and go in real deep. Now slow it down here. Notice he's gonna draw all the aggro here from Fnatic down this way. And all the while, look at Sake's positioning. He's sneaking around over here. They go in deep because they think they could blow Tist up, but the root's going to come in here for the punish. Blind Knot connecting, and this is going to be the root that ends up getting the kill here. Rich doing massive amounts of damage. Pulse Bomb goes through, and that's the first kill where Tist is just able to absorb that aggro and turn it into a kill. And if we look at the second replay, we're going to see something pretty similar. So we can roll that one forward as we jump into the second replay here in just a moment. This is just the end of that first fight. So the fight again here where Tiss, look at he's at the back here, gets rooted. He's going to come in and he's going to draw a ton of the aggro here. So if we can pause it right now, notice where Tiss is headed. He's headed this way. Everyone's getting Psy Storm right here. Tiss is going to go in and grab this aggro. But at the same time, notice where Rich is. No one's really focusing on him. No one's collapsing towards Rich. They're all focused on Tiss over here. 
And unfortunately, that's not going to be a good thing. As we roll it forward here in slow motion, you can see Tisk comes in on Quagnix. He's immobilized. Rich is just looking for an opportunity. Everyone's stuck here. Tisk body blocks right here after the toss over, and no one can protect Mene and Smexi, who are just stuck on the back line. Rich gets free damage done here. Mene is helpless, just totally pulse bombed here. Smexi just trying to do what he can, toss potions in, but he can't get out either. And as you watch the rest of this clip, if you can roll it at full speed, Smexi's just stuck in the corner here. Rich is going to have a field day. Lightning Breath comes out and the fight's over, but Rich is just able to do so much free damage because Tist absorbs that damage, absorbs the aggro, yeah. and wins those fights. I mean, it's even the small things, right? Even when Tist charges in as Diablo, yeah. he knows he's getting the stun. There's no reason to flip over into extra, you know, back into the side storm. When he's stunned, you can get a few extra auto attacks in, then flip over and continue to kind of elongate that whole CC chain. I mean, that entire first fight was started because of a missed storm bolt. Murden jumped in, went for an opportunity, yep. realized yep. he didn't get it. They were trying to back up. Diablo charged in, and actually, I'm a little curious as to why Fnatic decided to try and focus Diablo. They that's what I'm saying. Uh, it's it's a mistake as on, on Fnatic's side as much yep. as it is capitalization yeah. by Rich. When Tist is protected so well by Sake, Sake is flanking around. He drops down that route, and Tist is, or sorry, Rich is able to get into the back line consistently to get these picks. So, you know, it's a very difficult 